Hello everyone, welcome back to On The Fly. Today we're going to be taking a look at Day 7 of the Women's World Championship happening in Utica, USA. So that being said, I'll hop right into it today with the scores from today's game. Starting off with a 3 to nothing victory for Germany over China. Now this was a game coming in that really didn't mean that much for Germany. They already locked, it, locked the top spot in Group B down. Nothing more to play for. For China, this was a big game. If they could have won in, relegate, in, in regulation, they would have controlled their fate. They would have automatically made the quarterfinals. As well, they would have relegated both Japan and Denmark without any result in that other game. So lots to play for for China in this game. Unfortunately for them, could not pull it off. So a 3 to nothing victory. Germany looked really, really good today. Grace Son for China. and The goaltender looked outstanding yet again. I believe it was about 40 saves. Just a, a, another great effort from her. And, and unfortunately, you know, we, we've seen it in the goaltender rankings. She seems to fall about fourth in that list. In my opinion, she's probably the top one or top two. Really put the team on her back in this tournament, as well as Abstract. Or she's been really good as well but for China unfortunately for them they will get relegated we'll get to that game in just a second but we'll take one and I'll look at the second game of the day a 5-2 victory for the Czechs over the Swiss and in this game it was a dominant effort yet again by the Czechs and the Czechs looked really good they played their physical style of game which you know really resembles sort of that PWHL style that we've been looking at sort of see if any of the rules would change we saw it in the other the other night with the Canada US game it was probably the most violent game we've seen in women's hockey, at least at the international level, in a long time. And it was really entertaining to watch, but also it sort of showed how that how the game is starting to trend in that direction. A little bit more contact, a little bit more rough and tough. But that's how the checks are going to play, and it's really going to help them if, you know, the refs can bury their whistles in these games. Because if it looks anything like it did in that Swiss game where, you know, they weren't really calling that much. The checks can play that physical style. It is going to be a great game. To, to watch and I think I don't want to call it quite yet because obviously there's still games to be played in the quarterfinals but if you're looking at it as of right now it looks as if it'll be a Czech Canada semi-final if I'm the Canadians I would not be feeling too happy with that matchup especially if the, the Czechs are gonna be able to play that physical style where it got called a lot in their preliminary round action so time will tell whether or not the Czechs are going to be able to play that rough and tough style against the Canadians but if we look at it, you know, the Swiss also haven't won a game yet in Group A. They'll play the Finns in the quarters. It'll be a little bit of a tough matchup, but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves here. As we take a look at the third game of the day, and this is the one that really mattered in Group B. Remember, two teams relegated automatically in that group B, the bottom two teams. The third team in that spot, remember there was China, Japan, and Denmark. Remember back to yesterday, the what-if scenarios basically stated this. If assuming a China regulation loss, which it did, then if a game made it to overtime, Japan would have to score two goals or more in order to make it through. Otherwise, China would make it, uh, otherwise China would make it through. If Denmark won in any fashion, they'd make it through. If Japan won in regulation, they'd make it through. So if what happened was, you know, Japan went up 2-0, eliminating you know relegating china and then from there on out it became a winner take all game japan is your winner in this one three to nothing is the final and remember back to it china, uh, japan rather has had real trouble scoring goals this has continued in this game in my opinion really tough for them and, and we've seen it time and time again you know they can dominate the pace of play i think they put up about 30 shots 40 shots in that one just unfortunately for them they just have real troubles finding the back of the net and at the end of the day that's what happened. That, that's what counts, right? When we look at it in hockey, you got to put the pucks in the back of the net or else it doesn't count. But Japan is going to have a tough matchup coming up against the U.S. If they can play the way they've played, I think they can keep it close with the U.S. Uh, I was talking with someone earlier about it, and, and one of the things that got brought up was really it doesn't matter too much who the U.S. plays. And, you know, it is true. The U.S. will likely win the matchup no matter what, whether it be Denmark, China, or Japan. But in my opinion, Japan put up, would put up the greatest fight against uh, a team like the U.S. because of the way they play. They play the right way. They play that trap style that really sort of throws the U.S. for a loop. We saw it a little bit in that Czech game where the U.S. really struggled to find that those passing lanes, the shooting lanes. So we'll see what goes on with the U.S. on that. But now we'll take a look at the news. Starting off with, for China, the heartbreak. You know, they had a big win coming into the prelim in that preliminary round, that first game, beating Japan in a shootout. It looked like they were going to make it all the way. They, how they had to do was beat Denmark. Fortunately, they didn't, and they couldn't win today, which means that, of course, China is going to be the team that's relegated. So heartbreaking for them. So Sarah Hjalmarsson for Sweden got suspended for one game, so she'll miss the game against Canada. This would be a huge, huge loss for Sweden. And unfortunately for her, you know, 
it's one of those those sort of cross checks that you just want back and unfortunately you know it was one of those quick plays it happened so fast and she just took a bad penalty at the wrong time she'll get hit with the one game suspension which will knock her out for the quarterfinals against Canada and Sweden needs all hands on deck against Canada unfortunately they will be without their star defenseman so tough for them as for the Czechs um, Marizova is apparently as an outside chance to return that would be a huge huge pickup for the Czechs uh, Ian Kennedy reported it so when we look at it I mean for the Czechs coming into a tournament where you know they sort of looked decent you know they had a good first game against the Finns two roughish games against Canada and the U.S. and then they finally picked it back up against the Swiss they can add mirrors over to the lineup it's going to be a lights out performance so of course we'll see on that account as well for Japan somehow some way remember we just talked about it right they had a rough loss to china real upset loss with that shootout loser then they lost two more games in, re in regulation and sure enough they found their way you know you start when you start off oh two and one in a tournament it's going to be tough to even make the quarterfinals let alone make the quarterfinals and you know actually have a decent shot i wouldn't say it's a great shot but they do have a shot i think against the u.s to sort of cause a little bit of havoc in that game of course time will tell on that one and unfortunately for denmark they're the second team to be relegated losing to japan in this one so now we'll pull up the group a and group a group b rather final standings here with the u.s in first place in group a with 11 canada in second with 10 czechs in third with six finland in fourth with three and lastly switzerland in last place no wins in this one so far we'll see if they can pull it off against finland and i do think that they have a shot but we'll move it along here to group b now with four regulation wins for germany huge for them 12 points sweden in second with nine you have japan in third place with four points china in fourth place with three and denmark in last place with two points remember important to note bottom two teams are re relegated so they won't be returning for next year china and denmark are the two teams that will be relegated and now we'll take a look at the playoff bracket remember all these teams will be reseeded after the quarterfinals we're gonna have a full quarterfinal preview with game day hockey coming out tomorrow around 8 p.m eastern time so be sure to come back and tune in for that one we'll have the full sort of players to watch for what you're looking for and really who we think are, is going to take the matchups who we're going to take our favorites as well as you know key players to really watch for at this at the tournament so be sure to come back that'll be with game day hockey tomorrow so it'll be a good video make sure to come back for that one as well now let's just sort of run over sort of what's going to be happening in the quarterfinals here so canada and sweden will be your a2 b2 quarterfinal that'll be a really good one in my opinion you know at the end of the day sweden took them to overtime last year it's going to be another good matchup this year. Canada seems to have similar of a similar sort of team. Sure, the shots were 54 to 14 in the last year, but this year, you know, it really could be anyone's game. And we even saw it. You know, Sweden's looked really good in that group B, just waiting to break out. We'll see if they can do it there. As well, the A4, A5 quarterfinal between Finland and Switzerland. This one will be a good one. Finland took the sort of the opener. We'll see if they can continue their success against the Swiss. As well, now let's look at the A3 B1 quarterfinal between the Czechs and Germany. This one will be another good one, in my opinion. I, I would not count out Abstrider in Germany. She's looked really good. If Abstrider can play anything like she did against Sweden, you know, it's going to be a tough matchup. And, and I think for the Czechs, they can't take this one lightly. And lastly, we sort of already touched on it, but US and Japan, and that'll be another good one, A1 B3. So we'll see, you know, obviously lots of hockey to still be played. And we'll flip it over now to the schedule of what's going to be coming up. So we have a 10 a.m. game, Finns and Swiss in, Swiss in Switzerland. So that'll be another good game as well as Germany and Czechs coming up at 1.30. 5 p.m. will be between Canada and Sweden. And that's once again, another good game. And lastly, they'll conclude it at 8.30 p.m. So a late night on Thursday between Japan and the U.S., which will make for another good game. So with that being said, lots coming, lots coming out. Be sure to come back tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll have the full quarterfinal preview with our friends from Game Day Hockey. So be sure to come back for that one. But if you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. If you'd like to drop a like, if you really like to consider subscribing, tell all your friends to comment down below your thoughts on day seven of the Women's World Championship. Until next time, see you.